to be a god. survive underground. These are no ordinary flowers. Wait. Doesn't look like anyone's been around for a while. You can be sure they wanted to keep this place a secret. Some of this equipment's got the Triso logo on it. Are they working together? Wait, what? I wonder if this is what Irving meant by answers. Not sure. But obviously there's a connection here with Umbrella. And that's never a good sign. We can worry about this later. First we need to find out about Jill. You're right. Let's see what we can dig up. This area is very crucial to the story of this game. They weren't after these flowers, were they? Now, change it to Chris just to see this. What's Umbrella doing research on these flowers? You know they were, Chris, and you know it. So, any of you saw that very weird glitch at the beginning of this episode when we appear with no HP? And what use would they have for all this equipment down here? What kind of use? do you think they will have? Hmm, I almost forget about this. Just looking at that logo makes me sick. Of course, Sheva. That logo causes the death of your parents. Umbrella, what's their connection to all this? Go to hell, Umbrella. The Umbrella logo, what the hell are they doing here? Almost forget about that. Umbrella, what do they have to do with this? Suck on that, Wesker. Okay. So, if any of you saw that weird glitch, I'm still thinking about it, like how we started with no health, it really was a glitch, <laughs> that was just very weird because first time I ever see that, looks like water purifiers, the water is probably for the flowers, yeah for the flowers. Mm. For some reason I found this area to be one of the most, like, one of those very memorable areas of the game.
Wait. Okay. It looks like when they stole all the flowers, they uh, they stash them all in here. And the question is, how how can something so brutally evil can can come from from a flower like that? You know, what kind of bacteria those flowers can have? Wait. Thanks. Now we're gonna have a long book here. Sorry, lining to make you wait. From Chief Research Brandon's Journal, number one. 1966. December 4, Mr. Purser once spoke of a flower called the stairway to the sun. Supposedly, this flower will give the person who consume it incredible abilities. Everyone thought it was nothing more than a rumor or legend that Mr. Spencer was telling us, but later research will prove us wrong. The first person to recognize the, val the validity of that story was my teacher, Dr. James Marcos. He hypothesized that a virus here to unknown might exist that could later D.A.N. The man was so Pers perspicacious. His hypothesis turned out to be correct. Perspicacious. The virus discovered in that flower was labeled progenitor. For three months in Africa, we work diligently, fretter over results, and stab off attacks from Nimpaja. After such time, our efforts were finally rewarded. Nijipaja? I'm just gonna call it Nipaja. Even Dr. Marcus, who until yesterday looked exhausted, was in good spirits. He wants to return home as soon as possible to delve deeper into the research. I feel the same way. I want to learn the secrets of this progenitor virus as soon as possible. Nineteen sixty seven February twelfth we hit the metaphorical brick wall. We brought the progenitor flower back from Africa and attempted to cultivate it here. The initial culture samples of the progenitor virus have not shown DNA altering characteristic sorry DNA altering characteristics. We cultivated uh, the flower to mass produce the progenitor virus. At first, everything proceeded smoothly. The plants were strong and grew quickly. In a short amount of time, they flowered. And the mystery of these flowers. And here is when a major pro problem surfaced. The flower did not contain the progenitor virus. Perhaps the environment in which they grown trigger the development of the virus. This matter must be investigated further. March 23rd. We made no progress. We tried cultivating the flower under different conditions, but with no luck in triggering development of the virus itself. So far, we have tried changing the soil, water, temperature, and light exposure all with no success. Hmm? I got into a heat debate with Dr. Marcus about the direction this research was taken. During that debate, Mr. Spencer interjected some foolhardy notion of starting a company without the progenitor virus there is no point in starting a company. Does does he not see that? It's all pointless. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Lenny. Sorry to make your way, man. At the number G7. And now. It's gonna take you back to the past. To 
to a Resident Evil 2. Bro, one of the most iconic abominations of the Biohazard universe. The Leaker. The Demon Creature. I think there is a paper where he is. Wait. Read documents. Hey. From Chief Research Brandon's Journal Number Two, 1968, April 15. It's been over a year since we had any breakthrough. That is why Dr. Marcus and, and I had decided to return to Africa. We can no longer continue our research without the progenitor virus. I know those routine attacks by the Nipaja are really going to rack my nerves, but for the sake of our research, I will persevere. Nipaja. That's the name of the tribe, by the way, in case you don't know. In the face of my foreseen dismay, it was Mr. Spencer who provided the answer. If you are worried about the Nipaja, then we'll just have to remove them from the equation. I can only imagine the look of shock on our faces. Evil bastard, man. Fuck you, Spencer. Hop your rod in hell. The idea never occurred to us. It was quite a typical solution for our problem, but it seemed to be the only option available. Dr. Marcus and I decided to try Mr. Spencer's plan. August 19. Finally some good news. We learned they were able to chase any Nipaja off their land. The land we acquired only amount to half of those underground ruins, but it includes the area where the progenitor flower grows. Then there should be no issues. Hmm. Mr. Spence said he plans to construct research facilities at the site which will expedite our research into the virus. We hastily made our preparations to depart from Africa, for Africa, but Mr. Spencer requests that Dr. Marcus stay in Raccoon City to take over the training center. We were initially taken aback by this request, but we soon realized it was logical course of action Dr. Marcus need to calm environment to properly conduct his research. If he were in Africa, there would be no proper facility for him to use at this time. I just hope the African research facilities get built soon. That's taking you back to Resident Evil Zero, man. So now I will go alone to Africa and send back samples of, of the progenitor virus to Dr. Marcus. Both Dr. Marcus and Mr. Spencer agreed this is the best course of action. I had to start making preparations to go. I have a feeling I'll be pretty busy starting tomorrow. September 29. I've been in Africa for two weeks now. It's a good thing Dr. Marcus isn't here. This place is far from being a paradise of research and scientific study. The so-called research facilities are nothing more than a bunch of tents and we have to employ armed soldiers to keep the Nipaja at bay. <laughs> but the thing that gets on my nerves the most is the sound of the construction for the real research facilities. How I'm supposed to concentrate on research when everything is threatening to drive me insane? I'm trying to just concentrate on extracting virus samples from the progenitor flowers so I can send them to Dr. Marcus. Hopefully, if I could focus on my work, I can remain sane in this godforsaken place. Nineteen six nine. June 15. The research facilities are finally completed. This is a real Umbrella Africa Research Center, not just some pile of tents. But I come to a realization. In the past nine months, the facilities are too small for our needs. We need to make them larger, 
more suitable for research then we can fill them with more talented researchers this place needs to be our front line in our, pro in our progenitor virus research our result we do a great service to Dr. Marcus and his viral research viral research in a rare turn of event that old Skin Flint Spencer actually agree with me on this. Pass. Sorry guys, but I had to read all that. That's all super important to the lore. Thanks. And I know Pass. some of you would appreciate this. Telegram from James Marcus. T-Virus Development, a success. January 13, 1978. J. Marcus. Oh, that's it. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Lightning. The Umbrella Evil Logo. Research Center, Director, Brandon's Journal. 1998. November 16. We closed down the Research Center. It's strange, but I don't really care. I'm indifferent to the whole thing. I feel the same way as when I heard that the Arklane facility and Raccoon City were destroyed. When the I became so apathetic. I spent every waking moment res researching and extracting the progenitor virus. Everything I did was for Dr. Marcus. Actually, when I think about it, I probably stopped caring the day I, I heard he had died all those years ago. I didn't feel angry or happy or even shocked. I felt nothing at all. It was as if uh, all my emotions just shut down. I just kept sending out samples of the progenitor virus to all of Umbrella's laboratories. I was just an automated machine reporting to Umbrella headquarters. Every time one of my subordinates made a breakthrough or discovered something new. I was like a zombie ambling through life. No thoughts, no feelings. And now the research center where I spent half my life is closed. I really don't care one way or another. It's probably all for the best. Perhaps it's too late to have any semblance of a life again. Semblance. Semblance. This thing's broken. Maybe it's not plugged in. Thanks. Thanks. Well, trying to understand that my main language is not English and many of these words that are way too sign for me, you know. <laughs> Invoice copy, umbrella training facility, Dr. James Marcus, five cases of the progenitor sample, December 15, 1977, Africa Research Center, Director Brandon Bailey. Using them to produce biological weapons. This is the facility from the picture, no doubt about it. We're finally getting somewhere. It's those same flowers again. No doubt they're being used to make bio weapons for the biohazard apocalypse. I never thought of flowers as evil before. It's still flowers again. Somehow I don't think they are for modern days. <laughs> I think I've seen enough of these flowers. Right. 
So what else? Oh, we got this PC, right? Try some logo. Try some research. Miguel's journal, number one. February 19. When I heard it was the laboratory used by Umbrella in Africa, my expectations were raised, to say the least. But when I saw it, well, it's a lab in name only. I don't know how Umbrella ever used it. And lawyers know how Tricell could possibly have any use for it. The place was abandoned long, long ago, so there's nothing there of any value to us. Not one piece of lab equipment remains, at least nothing that still works. I can't say I'm surprised because I have expected this. I have expected this. Anyway, the important thing is the progenitor virus. Look at the leak here on the screen. The abominable. If we didn't need the virus for our research, there will be there will have been no need to come to this rundown umbrella facility anyway. We already have samples of the T virus, the G virus, and T Veronica virus, and even the Las Plagas parasite. We have everything we need for our research. God damn, man, this is so fucked up. We just didn't have the damn progenitor virus, but we finally got our hands on it. Hopefully, this will give us that much needed breakthrough in our research. I cannot wait to start working on it. Breakthrough. March 7. I wonder who came up with the name Leakers. Those creatures, I mean, when you see its long tongue, you just know that it's the perfect name. <laughs> yeah. But for researchers like me, VOWs, or bioorganic weapons, like leakers, are just a pain in the ass. If I say leakers were too perfect, I'd probably be going too far in my praise. But they, they are pretty much an evolutionary dead end. There's no room left for improvement. VOWs that were creatures using the T virus don't seem to show much improvement when the progenitor virus is administered. I mean, their abilities show some slight improvement. For example, their sense of smell seems more or less improved. But that is all we got so far. They are still blind as an old lady, and they are ugly as shit. <laughs> The biggest jump in their re evolution seems to be their ability to reproduce. I hate when things don't go according to plan, but since there's still a demand for liquors on the VOW's market, I guess things are, are not all that bad. Yeah, right, they're not. Thanks. 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 Thank you, Lenny, for waiting, man. Really, we all value your patience. An email to an acquaintance. Hey, I know this is sudden, but I'm going to be getting some time off soon. We completed most of our work on the new project. Sorry, you know I cannot talk about work. So they are giving us some time off as reward for all our hard work. Yeah, hard work. All the staff are leaving tomorrow and we'll finally be getting out of this country. I'm heading straight back to Arizona and I cannot wait to get home and see everyone. More than that, I think I'll just be happy to get away from the high and mighty Miguel guy. Think he's some sort of super genius. Miguel is a guy that sits next to me at work, and he's a good researcher and all, don't get me wrong. He's got some good ideas, and he's good at noting details, but every time he opens his mouth, he just goes on and on about how great he is. You can't even begin to imagine 
what torture it is to hear that day in and day out. I wish we, we made a sedative I could give him. But forget all that. What matters is that I should be back home within the next few days. When I get back, I'll give you a call. We got to go out and get match. I could use the damn break. Yeah, right. Look at the leaker on the screen. Talk to you soon, Ryan. Ryan out. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, man. Seriously, I uh, sorry to make you go through all that waiting. Look at this. That's the sign of a uh, umbrella terror going around the area, killing, destroying, and eating everything. Also, Wolverine escaped this facility too. Gonna have a new threat in this episode. Look at this place. Looks like it was attacked by a wild animal. What a horrible way to go. Shit, look at that. Yeah, horrible way to die, sorry. Damn, that looks... Really go around, man. Just the same here. Now, this place... It's a great example of, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in Africa or whatever you are. Like, starting from here, the game it starts to really feel very Resident okay. Evil. Or Biohazard, which that name kind of makes more sense. This poor animal is trapped here for experiment. Okay. Now, he wants to do the liquor attack. He wants to kill the liquor bare hands, so let's just sit down and watch this. This is the reason why he's using Chris right now, cause oh shit! How can you want two on you, buddy? Oh, he got one. Look. Wait. I, okay, I'm, I'm trying. Give me a second. Okay. He failed. Sorry, man. The command failed. I don't know why. Look at this. Thanks, man. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks to him, Thanks. I was able to to do my my own liquor hard kill. I know you're supposed to wait for animation and then you will do a counter attack, but I just I never feel to Thanks. I don't know. I just I don't feel safe doing that. Cause especially when I try to record a video if if I fail that it's just gonna be really embarrassing. Look at this hyena here. A cage for the lab animals. BOW your research, I suppose. Guess this is gonna be it. These poor animals, they're supposed to be food. Most of them. Now, this will explain why you see mutated dogs attacking you or hyenas. Thanks. So when you study this the game and you put some you know thought into it, you you just discover that a lot of things are there for a reason and and a lot of things this game they are here for you know there is an explanation for everything. Oh 
Also, this area really, really suits the mood of a of a true Resident Evil game. Like from for me, from this point and on, this game starts to feel as a shoe. So this is the monitor room. The monitor don't appear to be hook up. Try to remember if there's anything to read here, but I don't know. Go! Okay. Oh yeah, the AK. Good rifle. But it's very it's powerful, but it's very inaccurate as hell. Thank God there weren't more of them. Yeah, we wouldn't last in a fight with a whole horde. Oh, this is where I got that rocket launcher in my back right now. For a horde. Thanks. Now, this is really interesting right here. Look at this little guy right here in front of me. Hey, buddy. Do you miss Leon S. Kennedy? Sure you do. Leon and Sexy Claire. Now we're going to a biohazard moment. I don't think they'll notice us. Guess their senses are weak. Just to be safe, we should be as quiet as possible. Just be stealthy. Play the Metal Gear game. I don't know about any of you, but if this is not Resident Evil to you, I don't know what else can be. All right, now they hurt us, obviously. This rocket launcher that I got in my hand with oxygen rounds. It's the best way to deal with them. Just take it from me, kids. Nerds. Now I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to leave one for him. So he can do the uh, counter attack. Instant kill. So we could have a better angle of that. That is a great strategy what he did, putting those proximity mines on the floor. Hey buddy! That one's yours buddy, alright? Well, not the other one. Now look at this. I think Lightning's gonna attempt to do the counter attack. Expected the man wanted to do that, and I knew it would happen. Now we got so much to loot. I I don't have my controllers on controllers D, so I cannot move sideways. She sucks. So maybe that, that is a great reason why I shouldn't try to do that on the leakers. It's gonna be harder for me. Unless I switch the controllers right now, but Oh suck at that. Thanks. Sure bro. Thanks to you, amigo. 
Now there's nothing else new to read or pick up around the area, right? Roger. I guess I'm gonna cut out all this looting. Thanks. Let's go, amigo. Let's go and face one of my favorite biohazard five bosses. The first one that gave me a true scare. Yeah, this area. And the evil that lies ahead of this. Was the first time that I say holy fucking shit in this game. One of the finest biohazard boss. At least the way it looks. Okay. Problem is, I don't know if I have time enough to do the whole fight. Probably the, the full fight is gonna have to wait for the next episode. I don't know. But we'll see. At this place, it is a very crucial moment in this game, man. Like no other. experiment on.